If you need help with epithelial tissue, this video will give a simple overview of epithelial classification, location, function, and characteristics. There are several characteristics that all epithelial tissue types have in common. Epithelial tissue continuously self-renews by replacing old or damaged cells. This act of renewal can be described as regenerative. Regeneration is extremely important for all epithelia, as much of it is subjected to harsh chemicals, bacteria, or even abrasion. Also, all epithelia are characterized as avascular, meaning that epithelial tissues do not have any blood vessels. Without blood to circulate nutrients, epithelial tissues obtain their nutrition strictly through diffusion and absorption. All epithelial tissue is organized into flat sheets or layers to cover and line surfaces. Epithelial tissue always consists of at least one layer. Epithelial tissues cover external body surfaces, line body cavities, and line body passageways. Epithelial tissue functions to protect, secrete, and absorb. We will discuss examples of these functions as we cover the classification of various types of epithelial tissue. When you study this material, it is best to associate specific characteristics, functions, as well as know and understand examples of each tissue type. Simple epithelia tissue includes epithelia that are only one layer thick. This first type of simple epithelia is squamous which is composed of flat, thin, irregular shaped cells. The second is cuboidal, which is composed of cells that resemble hexagons. The third type is columnar, which is composed of column or rectangular shaped cells. A few general observational inferences can be made about this tissue. It is only one cell thick, so it will not be very strong. It would only provide limited protection. However, because it is only one cell thick, it will allow materials to easily diffuse in and out. Due to this property, simple epithelia are excellent at facilitating secretion, absorption, and filtration. Stratified epithelial tissue has numerous layers. Squamous, cuboidal, and columnar stratified epithelia have the same shapes as discussed with simple epithelia. In general, Stratified epithelial tissue provides protection. When looking at stratified squamous specifically, it can be either keratinized or non-keratinized. Keratinization gives the tissue a tough, water-resistant outer layer, like we see in skin. Non-keratinized tissue lines moist surfaces that are subjected to abrasion. Pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue is made of tightly packed cells which make it appear to have multiple layers. However, it is actually only comprised of a single sheet of cells. The tight packing aids in protection. Pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium plays an important role in lining the nasal cavity and trachea. Air that enters the nose needs to be warmed, moistened, and filtered before it gets to the lungs. This epithelium has two unique characteristics. Goblet cells and cilia. Goblet cells secrete mucin. Mucin mixed with water will then form mucus. Lots of tiny cilia act together to filter the air by trapping and sweeping away debris. This serves as protection for the respiratory system. Transitional epithelium is stratified and has the unique characteristic of being able to stretch and recoil. This property makes the tissue extremely important when lining things such as the urinary bladder. When the bladder is empty, the cells will be condensed. As the bladder becomes full, cells will expand. Glandular epithelium functions to secrete. Glands may be classified as endocrine or exocrine. Endocrine glands secrete their products directly into the extracellular fluid or blood. Exocrine glands secrete their products into ducts that deliver their products to their destination. The picture shows a simple exocrine gland. The pink cells are part of the duct. The red cells are glandular epithelium. I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to subscribe for additional simple anatomy overviews.